Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video I want to show you how you can use data tables inside of your ASP.NET Core applications. Now for demonstration right here I use a Razor Pages application. But it for sure also works for the MVC template for example. Now the amazing thing about data tables is that we have an API for sorting, filtering and performing aggregation, especially for real world scenarios, sorting and filtering is very very important. So let's get started. First of all, let's move into our pages folder in the project and let's go into the index.html page and let's simply replace all of this right here with a simple h1, let's say hello razor pages for example. Now we already made a video on Razor Pages, so if you have no clue on how they work, please go ahead and check out this video first. It just takes a couple of minutes as always, and it gives you a kickstart on Razor Pages. Anyway, here we have the index.cshtml page and we have a code behind file, right? So if you take a look at the Solution Explorer, you can see the index.cshtml.cs, which is providing the index model, which is actually getting used here as the model in the index.cshtml markup page. Great, so basically we have that onGet method and this onGet method is basically just like the answer that we will give to a get HTTP request. So inside here, we want to create a data table and give it back once we send a request from the CSHTML. So everything will get clear just in a second. Now let's create a public field, public data table uh, property public data table there we go let's call it just my table you can name it however you like let's create it get set let's make it a new one so simply write down new awesome so as you can see from the system.data namespace we are using that data table right here and that's an awesome way on how you can render amazing tables that also provide you an api for additional functionality in your asp.net applications now inside here Let's create a new data table, new data table, and let's add some columns. Now in total we want to have three, so let's say my table dot columns dot add. Let's add an ID here, type of, type of integer. Awesome. So I will repeat that right now. There we go. Now we have two additional columns, name and age, of type string and integer. Now we will add rows. So again, I will say my table, but this time I'll say rows. I want to add a row. I want to add some data, right? So rows dot add. I want to add ID one, name John. And for the third column, I want to add 25 as the H. Awesome. Now let me just copy that over. There we go. Now we have Mary and Bob right here. So where this is for sure just some mocking data right now, you could for sure use your own real data collections. Now in the onGet, we will put in all that data. And since we're using this index model inside of our CSHTML markup page, we can get access to this property here, which for sure stores the data. So now let's switch over to see how you can actually render this in Razor syntax. But before we do that, I want to tell you that we offer a self-paced online course that teaches you ASP.NET Core in depth with Angular, unit testing and even software design patterns in C Sharp. We offer a 14 day money back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C Sharp developer. Or if you take it even more serious, we also offer a one on one coaching or mentorship program where we will prepare you for technical job interviews, so data structures and algorithms, unit testing, portfolio building, and so much more. You can find the link for both of them in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Great, so now let's switch into our index.cs HTML. And here we got the Hello Razor pages content, right? So let me just zoom in a little bit. And now let's replace that with a simple table tag. Now, I'm absolutely not the fan of you watching me uh, folding out some HTML elements. So let me just bring in the code here. Just give me a second. Awesome. There we go. So here we have a pretty much default HTML table. We have a T head. Inside that T head, we have a table row. And inside that row, we have ID, name, and H. This is basically like the header. And here we have the T body, the data um, lives here, right? So our real data that we want to display lives here. And now we can use it for each loop to show the content. Now, first of all, scroll to the very top. Let's add a using directive because we need to 
get access to the data table class. And as you can see right here, it is in the system data namespace. So this is where we make use of using system data. Now inside of the T body, let's use some razor syntax. So add an add sign and then for each, now for each data row, I will not use var here so that you can really see what classes we're using. Data row in model dot my table dot rows. Okay, let's stop you for a second just to make sure that you understand what's going on. Model is our index model. That's the class that we are using here, index model, right? And index model has my table. This is a property and it's pointing to that data table property right here. And inside that table, we have the rows, which are basically what we are creating right here. Awesome. Okay, so this is how we're getting the data. Now, a table body usually contains table rows. So for each row, we will create a table row. And inside the table row, we usually have table data, so TD. And here, let's write down add row to get access to the row element from our loop. Make sure to use the add sign. If not, it's just plain HTML. You don't want that, right? And now we can use it like a dictionary to get access to specific elements. So row and then ID. Now let's copy that over two times because we have name and age. There we go, name and age. And let's start our application and see if this works fine. Okay, so here we are. This is our table. It's not styled pretty much right now, right? Because uh, I don't want to spend too much time on adding bootstrap classes, but we can do it by the end of the video. No worries. Uh, we can just add some classes to give it a better styling. However, here we have three columns and three rows, and we can now spend some time, for example, on sorting them. So let me just go into the code again. Let me just go into our data and let me just take another H for Mary, 25, 30 and 35, for example. Now let's start sorting the names. So we got John, Mary and Bob. And if we want to have it in a descending order, now we can say my table and then we create a custom view. And that one is called default view dot sort. Now we can define how we want to sort it. So we take the property name, which is named. So the column right here, right? And then we can write down D E S C for descending. Well, that's the opposite of ascending, right? And now we can finally just take my table again and say that it is the new view that we have created, which we call the default view. You can see that gets a customized view, right? So this is the view that we are creating right here, which contains the same data, but it just contains a different sorting. We take that one and we take the two table method to really bring that view into our my table property so that it can get rendered. So again, let's start the application. We should now see all the names in a different order. Instead of John, Mary and Bob, we can now see Mary, John and Bob, right? So it's descending, it's not ascending. If it would be ascending, we would for sure see that Bob is on first place. Now, same applies for sure for age. So let's do that real quick so that we can create a descending sorting on the age. There we go. Let's simply say age descending. We could for sure also say ascending, but let's say descending. Great, and now we have the age descending here, 35, 30, 25. So this is pretty easy, right? And as I said, uh, sorting and filtering is something that you really, really want to have because you need that functionality in every real world application. Okay, so now that we take a look or took a look on sorting, now let's get to the more exciting part, which is filtering. So. What we can do right here, let's just keep it. We can keep the sorting maybe, or pretty much often you want to combine things. Let's create a new data row array, just like that data row array. Let's call it results. Let's take our table. So my table dot select. So we simply take all of our rows right now and we select only those which we really want to have. We can put in some expressions here. Let's say where the age is bigger than 30. So right now we should only be able to see Bob because the age is bigger than 30, not even equals. Mary is 30, so she will not be selected right here. Awesome. Now we have to take our table and say that the results dot copy to data table, just like this. Great. So that we select all the rows that we want. And then we take them and bring them inside the table so that everything else is no longer getting displayed. So let's start the application and see if that works. And there we go. We can only see Bob because Bob has an age above 30. Awesome. So as you may have already guessed, if we put in 
bigger or equals right here and we start it again. We can for sure see Bob and Mary and since we're still using the descending order we can see 35 and 30 here. Now that said, filtering and sorting is definitely something that you want to use all the time, but there are also other things that you can do with it. With data tables, you can for sure run calculations, for example. So if you're interested in that, just write it down into the comment section below. Uh, we can make another video on that if you're interested, no problem. Now let's go into our source code and let's just add some styling elements as I promised earlier. So here we have the table, it just takes a second to be honest. So it's a table, there we go. Uh, that already makes the biggest difference and for the t head we can also say class equals to table dark great so as you can tell now it looks definitely way better and that's it for this video so thanks for watching i hope you liked it make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming videos check out our c sharp progress academy or our one-on-one -on -one mentorship program and i'd be happy to see you back in the next video